What is going on guys, it's Panjano here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the newly updated PUBG FPS increase guide for the Sandhawk map update. It's been around about six months or so ago since my last optimization video for PUBG. A lot of things have changed, tons of more optimizations have come out, the game state has changed a little bit, and the new map is now out, so I think it's time for a brand new updated guide to make sure that you guys can get the best FPS possible on the latest updates of PUBG. This guide applies to everyone regardless of whether or not you've got a low end system, medium end system, or a ultra high end system. You can find configs inside of here and configure these files to ensure that everyone is getting the best FPS possible whilst maintaining good visual quality depending on their system specs. As always guys if you are happy with this video and you are pleased with the results please do leave a like on this video as it helps me out tremendously. Please also feel free to leave your results, questions, queries and suggestions for more content in the comment section down below as it is always fantastic to hear from you guys and also feel free to subscribe to the channel and press that bell notification to be notified whenever I do upload brand new guides, updated guides to older videos and community suggested videos. And last but not least for any of you guys who are frequent followers of my content and wish to further support the channel in any way possible you can find my Patreon link down in the description down below but again that is only for you guys who frequently follow my content and wish to further support me no donations or patrons are completely necessary but if you wish to help out the channel and further support the channel you can do so on those platforms for any of you guys who are watching who have previously watched some of my videos or applied some fps optimizations to your game already i recommend overwriting those and i recommend following as many of the options within inside of this video to ensure that you guys are getting the best fps possible as some of the older and more outdated techniques from the older videos can sometimes even deteriorate from your fps now so it's best that we just install all these brand new files and the new launch options and go from there. So starting off with the video, what you guys will need to go ahead and do is navigate into the description down below and you'll find the PUBG FPS increase pack by Panj. Once you guys have downloaded the file, put it onto your desktop and you'll be left with a file like this. Now to open this file up, if you can't already, you'll need a program called 7-Zip or you'll need WinRAR. You can download either of those programs, just simply take yourself over to Google if you don't already have one. Google either of those programs, install it, come back to the video and then we can continue. Once you guys have got one of those programs installed, we can simply go ahead and right click on the file and go to extract here. You'll then be given a folder with an identical name. With inside of the folder, you'll then find that you have a configs folder, optimizations folder, and a credits.txt file. The credits.txt file is a link to the original author's websites of any optimizations or any programs included in this video. And you can read up a further explanation as to what they do, find the latest updates, and pay credits towards them if you wish to do so. It's just a file for all the original sources, if there are any. So keeping this video as fast and as to the point as possible, we're going to be starting off with the brand new launch options. So we're going to minimize that of the FPS pack provided. We're going to go down down to Steam and find Player Unknown Battlegrounds. Right click on PUBG and go to the Properties tab. Once we're inside of the Steam Properties tab, we can start off by going to the Enable Steam Overlay Whilst in Game option and actually unchecking that. The reason we're going to be unchecking this is because it's practically no use with inside of PUBG whatsoever, as there's already an in-game friend option in which you can use to invite people, and having the Steam Overlay enabled on quite a few machines can actually deteriorate from your FPS, so I recommend always turning this to the off position on as many games as you possibly can. And seeing that PUBG doesn't use any of its features, we can do this here. So once that's done unchecked, we can then navigate down to the Set Launch Options tab just underneath it. Then within inside of here, you guys should go ahead and remove absolutely everything you might already have inside of here if you've used any older launch options from other FPS guides, such as my own, until everything is cleared out. You can then navigate into the description down below and you'll find the launch options in which we're going to use, ready to copy and paste. So these launch options are going to be Use All Available Cores and also Dash Korean Rating. You guys can skip out the Dash Korean rating launch option if you don't wish to have the blue blood with inside of the game, but if you want your blood to be blue and Molotovs to be green instead of red for the fire, you can go ahead with the Korean rating as well. But these are the launch options in which I use, and you shouldn't be using any more or any less than this. So once you've got Use All Available Cores, and if you've decided to go with Korean rating or not, once you've got your launch options input, simply go ahead and press OK. Proceeding on from there, we can then go ahead and actually optimize the game EXE application itself, and also implement two of our custom game configs. We can do this by going over to the local files tab found here at the top, going down to browse local files. Then with inside of here, we're then going to be navigating inside of the TSL game folder, then going into binaries, going into Win64. Then with inside of here, we're then going to be going down to where it says TSL game, but then simply going to right click on the application and go to properties. With inside of the properties tab, we're then going to be going over to compatibility found at the top, and we're then going to proceed to check disable full screen optimizations and change high DPI settings and go for override high DPI scaling behavior performed by Checking that, pressing OK, ensuring that disable full screen optimizations is still checked, press apply and press OK. Once we're done inside of there, we can then go back into the browse local files folder to then open up the normal directory. We can then proceed to go back into the TSL game folder again. This time we're then going to be going into config. With inside of here, you'll then be greeted with a default compass and default light mass. With inside of here, we can then simply drag this folder over towards the right hand side and we can open up the FPS pack provided. Once you're inside of the FPS pack provided, simply go into the configs folder. And we're going to start off by going over to the game file configs. 
And within side of here, you'll then find the customized default compass and light mass. Just simply go ahead and highlight both of them, drag them over into your game files and replace the files in this destination. Once you're then done with inside of there, you can then exit out of both the folders and that part of the tutorial is complete. And proceeding on from there, what we can now do is actually implement our brand new custom in-game files. To do this, we're gonna be navigating into the bottom left-hand side, typing in percent, app data, percent, just like so, and pressing enter. Once you're inside of here, go to the app data folder found here at the top, go to the local folder, scroll all the way down until you find a folder called TSL game, double click on TSL game, go into saved, go into config, go into Windows No Editor, and then inside of here you'll then find all of your normal game files. So what we're going to be doing is actually dragging this over to the right hand side again, going back into the FPS pack provided by double clicking, dragging that over to the left hand side, going back into the configs folder, and this time we're now going to be going into the app data configs. Double click inside of there, and again like the step before, simply go ahead and highlight all of the configs inside of here, drag them over to the right hand side into your game configs, and replace the files in this destination. Now before exiting out of our actual game config folder, what we can actually go ahead and do is go back to where it says config here at the top, go into crash report client, and we can actually go ahead and highlight all of the folders with inside of here. If you haven't been in here before and you've had PUBG installed for a while, this folder can be absolutely massive and you can clear out so much space in your hard drives and SSDs by deleting all of these crash reports in here, as these sometimes can take up an incredible amount of space. So we can start off by simply highlighting all of the folders with inside of here and deleting them by right clicking and delete. We can then also go back to the TSL game folder found at the top again, going into saved, going into crashes, and with this side of here you can also find even more of your excess crash data, and sometimes these and sometimes these folders alone can be 100 megabytes plus just for each folder. So every folder you've got is taking up around about 100 megabytes. So if you've got 10 of these folders in here alone, that's already taking up a gig of space on your hard drive or SSD. So depending on how much you have, you've probably got more than I do in here. Highlight every single one of these, right click, and hit delete. Then go up to the top left hand side and empty your recycling bin and empty the files out of there permanently. You can then proceed to exit out of all of your game files as they are completely installed. Now that we've optimized the game EXEs themselves, installed the brand new launch options and installed the custom game files, what we can actually do now is actually navigate down into Steam, go to Battlegrounds and simply go ahead and press play as we're going to be changing around the in-game settings with inside of the menu. Once you guys have booted into the game and you're at the main menu, we can simply go ahead and navigate to the top right hand side to the settings cog and click on it once. Go down to the settings tab, and this time we're going to be going over to graphics. With inside of here, we're going to go ahead and further optimize our in-game settings and optimize them depending on what sort of visual quality you want and what sort of system you're running on. So starting off, what we're going to be doing is going over to video capture, going over to highlights, auto capture, and if you can, turn this to disabled. If it's already set to disabled, that's absolutely fine and we can move on. Going down to display mode, some of you guys might find better results going with full screen, but I recommend most of you try out full screen windowed, as this can drastically help reduce crashing with inside of the game. Once you guys have gone past there, you can set your resolution to your normal monitor resolution, which it defaults to. For me, that's 1920 by 1080. But do note that the higher this FOV is and the higher this value is, the lower FPS you'll be getting. So if you want the best FPS possible, maybe don't turn this all the way up to 103, but you can do if that is your personal preference. Brightness is completely personal preference and does not change the outcome of this guide. You can set that to anything you wish to do so. Going down to advanced settings, we're going to be going over to overall quality and setting this to custom. Screen scale is one of the most important options with inside of here, which will determine how much FPS you get and what sort of system you're running on. With inside of the left-hand side of the screen now, I'll be putting up the criteria depending on your system specs as to what screen scale you should be running on. Simply go ahead and follow the directions on the left-hand side and set the number accordingly to what your system specs are. Assuming that I'm recording this video on my high-end gaming rig, I'm personally going to be going with a screen scale of 100%, but for some of you guys, even on higher-end rigs, you can actually go with a screen scale of around about 90 to 95. The game will look a slight bit blurrier, but the performance will be absolutely phenomenal. So it's always worthwhile coming in here, changing the screen scale, and finding a good balance of visual quality and FPS. Anti-aliasing, we're always going to be turning this to the very low position. Post processing is also going to be switched to very low. Shadows, very low. Textures, again, we're going to be matching this to our system specs. So if you've got a very low-end system, go with very low. Low-end system, low. Medium-end system, medium. High-end system, high. Ultra-end system, go with ultra if you wish to do so. But I wouldn't really recommend anyone going past the medium or high section, regardless of what sort of system you're on. Again, I'm running on a high-end system, but I like to go with medium. Effects quality, we're going to be going with very low. Foliage we're going to be going with very low, view distance is also going to be set to very low. As we can still see the max view distance, it just doesn't render in some of the objects and stuff like that, which actually helps us and helps us gain a better frame rate. 
V-Sync and Motion Blur are always going to be switched to the off position as they generate a horrible amount of input lag. And once you guys have got that done, simply go ahead and press apply. Once you're then done with inside of your graphics settings, we can then navigate up to the gameplay tab. With inside of the inventory character render right at the top, we're going to be switching that to the off position. And we can then proceed to scroll all the way down with inside of here, then going over to the replay functionality and disabling the replay and disabling the death cam. Now I know the functionality of having the replay system and the def cam system is pretty cool, but to be honest, I prefer the FPS gains I get from it. There's yet to be a system I've optimized and put these settings on, which hasn't benefited from having these set to disabled. So once that's all been done, simply go ahead and press apply. And then you can also set all of your game settings back to the default ones in case they've changed. Make sure they're all set back, then go ahead and press apply press close and we can then go ahead and continue on with the video. Proceeding on from there what we can actually go ahead and do is apply a quick fix to our sound options to ensure that they are running natively and PUBG doesn't have any hitching issues or stuttering issues depending on what your sound drivers are set to. To do this is actually very simple, simply go ahead and right click on your sound device down here in the bottom right hand side, then go to sounds, with inside of here then go to the playback tab found here in the top left hand side, go to where your speaker icon is or whatever you're using as your default device, it's usually got the green tick next to it. Right click on your speakers or your sound output device, whichever you're using, right click and go to properties. With inside of the properties tab, go to the enhancements tab found at the top. Go to the box for disable all sound effects. Now before we actually apply this, do bear in mind that sometimes when you do press apply, all of the sound in your system might actually cut out. And if it does, don't panic. All you simply have to do is close out of all of the programs you, that you have open, which you're actually emitting sound, <clears throat> open them back up and you'll be out of here just fine. So once you've disabled all the sound effects, go ahead and press apply in the bottom right. Once you've done that, go to the advanced tab found here at the top. Go to the default format, go to the drop down menu, and go right to the top until you find 16 bit 44,100 hertz CD quality. Select that option. Once that's then been selected, again, apply and OK. You can then apply those and press OK to that tab, and then we're done with the sound settings. Proceeding on from there, what we can now go ahead and do for any of you NVIDIA guys is we can apply a very quick fix and which can help the overall stability and smoothness with inside of the game, which, which can also help with reducing stuttering and lowering your input lag. So to do this, we can go ahead and actually navigate into the FPS pack provided, this time going into the optimizations folder. We're then going to be double clicking on the NVIDIA profile inspector by double clicking. With inside of here, make sure it's set to underscore global driver. So don't touch anything, it should defaultly load this up. We're then going to go down past compatibility to number two, which is sync and refresh. We're then going to go over to where it says frame rate limiter mode. Now this might be greyed out, if it is just simply click on the setting. Go to the drop down menu with inside of here and select the option for control delay flip by flip. Selecting that, the number should be 0x0000000004. Once that's then been set, go ahead and press apply changes in the top right hand side. You can then exit out of the profile inspector. And what I like to do then is simply go back into the profile inspector, double check that the option has actually been applied properly. And if it is, it should look similar to this and then just simply exit out. For any of you guys running on a slightly older NVIDIA card, that option may not be available. And for any of you guys on AMD, you will not be able to do that step. But if you can follow that step and the options are available for you, I recommend everyone watching that can apply it, goes ahead and does it. Proceeding on from there, what we can actually go ahead and do is actually apply the latest Windows Power Plan option on which we're gonna be using to ensure we're getting the most horsepower out of our machines. To do this, simply navigate to the bottom left-hand side, type in power, and click on any of the battery icons with the cord going around it. With inside of here, go to the power options tab found here at the top. Go to the drop down menu for show additional power plans and you should be seeing balanced, high performance and power saver. I'm personally going to be using the ultimate performance power plan in which most of you guys will not be able to see on your machines. And if you wish to unlock this ultimate performance power plan, you can follow the video in the top right hand side of the screen now on the card. And it will take you to the video showing you a tutorial on how to quickly install this to your machine. It's safe and easy to use and it's highly effective in giving you the best performance possible and I always recommend everyone installs it to give it a try and see if you get better FPS with it. If you don't wish to follow that video and you just want to stick with this video, you can also go for the high performance power plan. So just simply select either the ultimate or high performance power plan. Once you've selected one of them, make sure you've gone ahead and actually checked it. Then go to change plan settings. Set these two options here to anything you wish to do so they do not affect the guide and they are personal preference. Once you guys have got them set, go down to change advanced power settings, go into hard disk, turn off hard disk after, go to the setting with inside of here, double click on the number and ensure the number is then set to zero. Once that's then been set, go ahead and press apply. You can then go ahead and scroll down to the bottom, going to processor power management, minimum processor state, maximum processor state, and ensure that they are both set to 100%. If they're not, double click on the number, input 100, press apply and press OK. Save changes to your power settings and then simply exit out of the power options and that step is done. 
Now, proceeding on from the power options optimizations, we can actually do a piggybacking step to ensure that we are unlocking the full potential of our CPU with inside of Windows to increase our frame rates, reduce stuttering, and just overall give us a more snappier experience. To do this, we're going to be navigating into the FPS pack provided once again, going into the optimizations folder, and this time going over to the CPU core parking setup 2110. Double click on the setup, and the setup wizard will then open up. Now, for a full in depth explanation as to what this program does, you can find it in the credits.txt and you can follow the original author's website to find the latest downloads for the latest versions of this program and a full in depth explanation as to what it does. But for a brief explanation, what it basically does is it allows you to fully unpark the CPU cores on your system, and you're probably wondering what that is. Windows usually parks around about 20% of your CPU cores, which means that they are allocated to other resources within inside of your system. So let's say you're in a high demanding situation with inside of a game, you're only getting 80% of your CPU power. So using this program, we can actually go ahead and unlock that to 100% to mean that we can get our full CPU horsepower going towards the applications that need it and not spread across and actually throttling things, which can sometimes cause stuttering and lower FPS. This will not have anything to do with increasing heat with inside of your processor or instability. And it's something I recommend that everyone does regardless of what sort of system you're on, even if you're not even intending on gaming. So to use this program, simply go ahead and press next. Accept the terms of the license agreement and press next. And finally, press next and install. Once the program is installed, ensure that it's set to launch CPU core parking through to exe once it's installed and press finish. Once the program opens up, you might be notified of an update that might be available and you can download that if you wish to do so, or you can just go ahead and close out of the updater. Once the program opens up, you should notice that your program should look similar to mine, but the numbers and the settings should be different. Now, I know this program can look somewhat intimidating, but we're only gonna be changing around four things and it's actually very, very simple to do. To start off, we're going to be going into the top left hand side to the power data system plan found here at the top left. Click on the drop down menu and you should then be seeing all of the power options available to you on your PC and which we set earlier on. So whether or not you went with the high performance power plan or the ultimate performance power plan, you want to select the one you selected earlier to match it. So for me, I went for the ultimate performance power plan, so I'm going to be selecting that. They're going to be going down to the core parking index slider, and this is the percentage of the CPU cores that are going to be unparked. So we want to set this all the way up to 100% just by simply dragging it and dropping it over to 100%. We're then going to be going down to the frequency scaling index down here on the right hand side and setting this to 100% as well, as this is the speed of the cores in which you're going to be unparked. And last but not least, we're then going to be going down to the turbo boost index and dragging this all the way up to 100% as well, as this is the maximum turbo boost frequency or the maximum turbo boost speed of all of those cores. So setting all of those to 100% allows your system to have 100% access to all of the horsepower with inside of your CPU so you won't run into any throttling and you should be able to see a noticeable difference in performance across the board but any productivity tasks you are doing as well. Once you're then done inside of there simply go ahead and press the apply button it will then notify you that the changes have successfully been applied, press OK, and then you can then close out of the program. Following on from that step onto one of the last steps within inside of this guide for performance, we're then going to be going into the bottom left hand side and typing in this PC. We're then going to be right clicking on this PC and going to properties. With inside of here, we're then going to be navigating to the left hand side and you should be able to see advanced system settings. Click on that. The system properties tab will then open up, simply go to the advanced tab. Go to performance and click on settings. With inside of the visual effects tab, it's usually set to let Windows choose what's best for my computer. But what we're actually gonna be doing is going ahead and setting this down to custom. Now I know some of you guys who might follow some of my previous videos or videos for other games, I usually recommend doing this step. And for any of you guys who are watching who have done this step in a previous guide, make sure you do go ahead and actually follow along with this again, as the latest Windows updates usually set these settings back to default. So it's always best to just double check. Once it's been set to custom, simply go ahead and start unchecking everything by clicking on the tick box until it's unchecked. And we're only going to be leaving two options with inside of here enabled. Those two options are going to be smooth edges of screen fonts and show thumbnails instead of icons. You should not notice a visual difference by turning off the options we have and the two options we've left enabled are the only ones in which you should notice so that's why we're going to be keeping them on. I personally do not turn on smooth edges of screen fonts as I prefer the rougher looking text with inside of Windows and that is personal preference. So you can go ahead and enable this if you want to or you can try it without. Performance will not change regardless of which you do. Once you've got those set, simply go ahead and press the apply button. After that's been applied, simply go ahead and navigate to the advanced tab found here at the top. Go to process the scheduling and adjust the best performance of programs. And once that's then set, we're then going to be going down to the virtual memory tab and clicking on change. With inside of here, you'll usually find that the automatically managed paging files for all drives has been checked. We're going to be unchecking this and we're then going to proceed to delete all of the paging files on our systems. We're going to be going ahead and actually deleting all the old paging files within our systems, which basically acts as like secondary RAM. We're going to be clearing all of those out and putting it in the most optimized position possible, depending on our system specs. So to delete all the old paging files within inside of your system, we're going to be starting off by going from the top drive all the way down to the bottom 
bottom one by one. You may have more or less drives in here than I do. I personally have four drives installed to my machine, but if you've only got one or you might have more than me, don't worry, just simply go ahead and apply all of this to as many as you can. So I'm going to be starting off with my C drive by highlighting it by clicking on it once, going down to no paging file, selecting that and then pressing set. You'll then be given this warning message, that's fine as we're going to be replacing this paging file in a minute. Press yes. Once it's then done, simply navigate to the next drive down, which is going to be my D drive, select that, no paging file, set, and repeat this step for all of the drives on your system until you've done it to every single one of them. Now that you've gone ahead and actually removed all of the old paging files, we can now go on to the criteria in which should be popping up on the right hand side of the screen now, which will help you guys follow along with deciding where you're going to be placing your new paging file, depending on your system specs. The best place you can place a paging file no matter what will be on an SSD. So if you have an SSD installed to your system, we're always going to be wanting to select our SSD to put our paging file on. If you do not have an SSD in your system, but you have multiple hard drives, we always want to put the paging file on the hard drive, which does not have our games installed to it, as the usage on that hard drive is usually a lot lower. And last but not least, for any of you guys who just have one single drive in your machine, whether that be an SSD or a hard drive, we're going to be installing it just to that C drive. So going off of that criteria, identify the drive letter corresponding to the drive you're going to be installing it to. If you're not entirely sure which drive letter the drive is, simply go down to your file explorer found here, right click, go to file explorer, go to this PC and with inside of here you can see the name of all the drives and the drive letters assigned to them. So for me I'm going to be installing this to my local disk C drive as this is an SSD and it's my main drive and my games are not installed to this drive. So we can simply go back to the virtual memory tab, select the drive we're going to be installing it to so this might be different for you, select the drive you're going to install it to and once the drive has been selected simply navigate down to system manage size, select that and then press set. Once that's then been completed you should see that the paging file size down here should be set to system managed then simply go ahead and press OK. You'll then be given this notification which will tell you that you have to restart your PC for the changes to take effect. We're not going to be restarting just yet as we're going to be restarting at the end of this guide to ensure that everything is applied properly. Simply go ahead and press OK. Press Apply. OK once again and OK. You will then be prompted to restart but just going to hit restart later as we're going to be restarting later on in the video anyway. Now that we've reached this stage in the video, we're now done applying all of the optimizations and we can proceed to the last step after restarting our PCs, in which we're going to do now. To do this properly, we're going to be navigating into the bottom left hand side, going to our power button, right clicking and selecting restart. Restart your PCs, come back onto the video, boot up into Steam and you should be ready to go with the last step of this video in which we can get underway now. Welcome back to the video guys, you should have now restarted your machines, be back on this video, have Steam open and be ready to play. Last step of what we're going to be doing is navigating into the FPS pack provided one last time, going into the optimizations folder. This time we're going to be selecting the timer resolution application, dragging it onto the desktop. Once it's been dragged onto the desktop, I'm going to give you guys a basic explanation as to what this program does. What this program does is it basically lowers the amount of latency between the hardware in your system, the operating system itself and the game application. The reason this benefits you with inside of games and inside of workloads is it lowers the amount of frame time, reduces the amount of input lag, and improves the overall stability and responsiveness of practically any application. I use this for pretty much every single game and heavy application I do on my PC, and I recommend this program to everyone. It's very simple and lightweight to use. So to use it, what you go ahead and do is you boot into the program by double clicking, going over to the maximum button to set the lowest value possible, and you should see the current resolution should drop down here. Once you've then set that, you then minimize out the program, but keeping the program running, Open up the game or application you're about to work on or play, play it or work on it for however long you wish to do so. Once you're then done playing, close out the game, maximize the program back up, select default, and then exit out. So assuming that we have now completed the guide, there's one last thing left to do, and that is to boot into the time resolution application, select maximum, minimize the program, go into Steam, go to Battlegrounds, and hit play. And there you guys have it, that is the ultimate FPS increase guide for the Battlegrounds Sandhawk update. Again guys, if you have appreciated this video and you are happy with the results, please do hit that like button as it helps me out tremendously. Like and share this around with any friends on Discord, any squad mates or anyone that you might be playing PUBG with, or you find could benefit from the optimizations in this video. And let me know of your results, questions, queries and suggestions for more content in that comment section down below as it is always fantastic to hear your feedback and engage with you guys. As always guys, feel free to subscribe to the channel and press that bell notification to be notified whenever I upload updated guides, new guides or community suggested videos instantly. There's also going to be a few videos linked at the end of the video and in the description down below in which you can follow if you have a slight bit more time to further optimise your system across the board to ensure that you get the most out of it as possible. This is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to system optimization, and it does fully optimise the game itself but there is so much more you can do to your system if you just invest the time, check out those videos and I guarantee you'll be more than happy with the results in which you get. Anyway with all that said and done guys thank you very much for watching this video, I've been Panjano and I'm out.